So this is the first video for chapter seven, and in this section, or this video, we're gonna review um, probably a lot of stuff you already know about angles, things you learned last year, um, and stuff they expect you to know as we start chapter seven. So in this section, or this video, we're gonna use a protractor to measure and draw any angle, and then classify it as what type of angle it is. Is it acute, right, obtuse, or straight? So you probably remember some of those words. Let's go over some vocab. So write these down in your notes. An angle is where any two line segments meet. So we make an angle just by drawing two lines that meet at a point. And the point where they meet is the vertex. That's another vocab word you're gonna to add to your list. But so far we just need angle. It's just two lines that intersect and they make this angle. And then we measure it in degrees. So we have anywhere from zero to 360 degrees that we can measure angles. So a very small angle would have a small number of degrees, maybe like 10 degrees is a really small angle. And then the bigger you get as you open up your angle, it might get up to like 70 degrees or all the way up to 180 or 360. So we'll talk about different measurements, but just know that angles are measured in degrees. So a protractor is this tool right here. I have one on my screen and you'll get to use one in class. It helps us measure angles. So it tells us the size of the angle and it helps us draw angles as well. So you can see these numbers on here. They start over here at zero on the inside and they count up all the way over to here. They would count up to 180. Or I can start on the other side, like the outside numbers here, they start at zero and go this way and count up to 180 over here. So I can use my protractor both ways to measure the size of angles. And I'll show you how that works. But it's just a tool to help us measure, kind of like a ruler helps us measure length. So if I ask you to measure an angle, that means tell me how many degrees it is. So find the number, measure it, and tell me how many degrees. Like, I measured this to be 10 degrees, or this one is 70 degrees. If the directions ever say to construct an angle, that means to draw it for yourself. So use a ruler, use a protractor, and construct it or draw an angle. That's a certain type of angle or a certain measurement of an angle. And then the last one, classify. You'll see this word a lot in this chapter. To classify something means kind of to sort, sort it and put it into a group. Or tell me what category it goes into. So if I say, like, classify the shape, you'd say, oh, that's a triangle, or oh, that's a rectangle. So to classify angles, you're going to tell me what type of angle it is. We're going to see classify used lots of different ways in this chapter. So these are the different types of angles that you do need to know. You've probably seen them before. We're going to write the definitions down quick, and then I'll show you pictures that you can add to your notes as well. So acute means an angle that measures less than 90 degrees. Okay, so it's smaller than 90 degrees in measurement. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. So it makes a right angle and we show that with putting a little box in the corner. So if I show my angle and it makes a right angle 90 degrees, just like the corner of a piece of paper, that's a right angle. Obtuse means it measures more than 90 degrees. So something a little bit bigger than 90 degrees. A straight angle actually opens up and makes a straight line. We'll show you that. You can add a picture on the next slide. And then also we need to know vertex. So we talked about this a little bit. A vertex is where the two lines meet or the tip or the point of an angle. So please add these pictures to your definitions as well. Here we have our acute less than 90. So this measurement right here is going to be a number of degrees that's smaller than 90. Exactly equal to 90 gives us the right angle, and we put that symbol in there. Don't forget that. Obtuse, bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So here would be 90, about. So it's a, you can tell it's a little bit bigger, but it's not quite opened up to straight. And here's the straight angle. It's exactly equal to 180 degrees. Remember, you still have a vertex somewhere in the middle, so the vertex is there. I have one side of my angle and then the other side of my angle, and they make a straight line. 
So just for kind of reference, put these on your paper. You're going to need to draw a grid. Remember kind of like our coordinate grid? This would help us a little bit. Um, if I have zero degrees, that means, let me get a color so you can see it, zero degrees. If I start here and my other line is exactly in the same place, there's no real measurement there, zero degrees. If I go to 45 degrees, 45 degrees would be about halfway between zero and 90, right? Halfway between zero and a right angle. So that would be about 45 degrees, this distance right here. 90, let me switch colors, would be if I again start at zero and then go straight up, so perpendicular. I'm right, this makes my right angle 90 degrees. And then 180 actually means that I've opened it all the way up to a straight angle. So all the way to here would be 180 degrees. 270 would be to add another 90 onto that, so add this much more. Now I am, if I go back to red, now I'm like here, going all the way around to this angle. So it would kind of look like this, all the way around to there. That would be 270. And then 360. So if you've ever heard like in the X Games or skateboarders or snowboarders, they talk about, well, I did a 360. That means they did one entire rotation and went back to the starting point. So that's 360 degrees to so go all the way completely around. So that just kind of gives you a reference point of how big some different angles are. There's a question here. Can we have negative angle measurements? Um, no, not typically. We don't really talk about angles in terms of negative numbers. If I wanted to go to here, I would just say like if I wanted this angle here, right, it's still a 20 degree angle or however big it is when I measure it. I don't really talk about negatives. Just like we can't have negative lengths, we probably don't have negative angles. So before we get into chapter 7, it's really important that you know how to name an angle. Okay, so I have some angles up here. Let's talk about the different names. First of all, there's a symbol right here. I circled it in red. That is an angle symbol. If you are naming an angle, you need to put that in front of it to say, hey, I'm giving you the name of an angle here. So angles are named by the letters. Um, as you can see, there's lots of letters up here. So the letters would be the different points on that picture, along that angle. Okay, so these are all points on the lines. Let's talk about how to name these. The first way is just using one letter. Right, if I look at this first one, I could say this is angle Q. And that tells me, hey, it's this angle right here that has Q at the vertex. Great. Or this one I could call angle K with an angle symbol. Angle K means this angle right here. But if I have more than one angle at a time, like in this example, if I said angle D, you wouldn't know if I was talking about this angle or this angle or the big angle altogether. So we have to be more specific and use three letters. So if I wanted to name that angle, I could call it angle L, D, N. And if I follow L to D to N, I trace out that angle that I was referring to. So three letters means you trace it out in order. And this middle one is always the vertex. So here's what I have up at the top. I could say like angle L, D, N. When I write it, it would just look like this. Okay, where that middle letter is the vertex the point, the tip. So that would be different from, if I switched and wanted to talk about this angle, I could call that angle P, D, N. Okay, and that would actually be the same angle as starting here, N, D, P. So you just tell me the three letters in order as if you were tracing it out, and that middle letter is always going to be the vertex. So I wanted to give you some practice and um, maybe hopefully review of how to use a protractor. So I have some different angles drawn up here, and then I put my protractor on top of it so we can use the protractor to measure them and say how big they are. I want to point out this right here. We know that this is the angle symbol. Whenever you see a lowercase m in front of it, it means measure. So all of these examples are asking you for the measure, which means measure it with a protractor and give me a number of how big it is. So, D-A-N. 
Um, D, looks like it's straight up at the top there. A, it's right here at the vertex. And N is over here. So if I trace that angle out, they're asking how big it would be. My protractor is slightly off. Should be, it's just a teeny bit cockeyed, crooked. But I should be able to measure from D to A to N. So I usually start at one edge. My protractor's lined up where this line follows along the bottom edge of my protractor. And I measure, and my angle goes all the way to here. And then I look at the number on the protractor, and that's at 90 degrees. Or a measure of angle BAT. So here's B. A is still my vertex, and T is back over here. So it's this little angle between B and T, really, if I measure that out. So again, I make sure it's lined up on the bottom with the bottom edge of my protractor. And I measure up this way. So you can see I'm at 0, 10, and then 20. That should be lined up with 20. It's a little bit off. Kind of looks like 21, 22 degrees. C-A-N, measure of angle C-A-N. So find the C up here. A is still your vertex. A, um, N is back over there. So now I want to know how big this entire angle is all the way to there. So line up the bottom. So we're going to start here at 0 and count up. 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, there's 90, 100, 110, 120, right about 120, maybe it looks kind of better, like closer to 118, okay, so pause and then you try the last three, find the angles, angle T-A-N, R-A-N, D-A-R, and then tell me how big those are, measure them with the projector. So the first one, T-A-N, that you just did, let's check that. It starts over here, and it's this straight angle all the way over to N. So a straight angle is 180 degrees, straight line. R-A-N, that goes from, looks like here's R, A, N would be back over here. So that green angle, how big is that? Well, if I start at zero and count up, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, looks like about 70. And then D-A-R. So D-A-R is right here, let me get a different color, right here between these two lines. So I want to know how big that is. Well, pick either set of numbers. Let's use 90 and 70, right? This one's at 90 and this one's at 70. So I can tell that that would be 20 degrees right here in between them. So I know that's not a lot, it's not enough practice with the protractor, um, but in class we'll do more practice where we measure angles and draw your own angles um, of a certain size. So we'll do more with this together in class, but that's the basics.